hello. Come in. Hello, Cletus. Hello, Jim Bob. Hello, Sammy. Mmm. Good coffee. I am John Beckman. Professor John Beckman. Dr. John Beckman. U.S. Senate. GOP primary candidate in the state of Alabama. Vote for me, March 3rd. Today, we are going to talk about Nietzsche's thoughts on socialism. We're going to have redo a little reading. I'm do something a little bit different today. We'll do some readings. Uh, we'll read a Bible verse. Uh, everybody will love that. So, but first, get your coffee. Good morning, teddy bear. Get your get your coffee in a cup. Hold it up. Mm, let's do a citation to the simultaneous libation of Scott Adams. Cheers. Okay. Very, very good. It's very important that you're drinking these drinks. It's very, very, very important. Mm. That helps us train together. Okay, Nietzsche's thoughts on socialism. So, I've been reading this book. The, this, ooh, this is a naked guy. The Will to Power. Okay, the book is The Will to Power. Um, the Will to Power is, is... It's kind of a controversial book. It's... It's a bunch of Nietzsche's uh, notebooks, and after Nietzsche died, they, his sister compiled these notebooks into this book called The Will to Power. So The Will to Power needs to be read in that context. You need to understand that it's not a solidified book of, of, of completed thinking. It's a book of, it's a book of, it's an assembly of Nietzsche's notebooks, his thoughts, okay? So that's what The Will to Power is. And as I was reading this, this book, uh, and, and in some of the books that I've been reading lately, it's out, it keeps striking me. Patterns keep reemerging, and so the stuff that I'm reading in books that are like a hundred years old is like things that it, it's in the context of things that we are seeing today. Like things repeat themselves, so it makes me always think of this quote that there's nothing new under the sun. So that comes this, that comes from this Ecclesiastes quote in the Bible. I'll just read it. This is Ecclesiastes one nine. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. So this is this concept that like everything is like keeps repeating. And this book, this Will to Power book is 120 years old. Okay. And I'm reading it. And Nietzsche has all these thoughts on socialism. So there's this, there's this like one paragraph. There's this one page where Nietzsche lays out all his thoughts on socialism. And all the thoughts that he thinks on socialism are still like completely applicable today. Like you still see the same stuff. So I'm gonna kind of like go through this uh, and I'll explain it. I guess, but, but first just a little context of Nietzsche just so you kind of, if you haven't, if you haven't read his books before or heard of him, um, Nietzsche is this philosopher who really admires strength. He likes strong-willed people. He likes strong-willed personalities. And he kind of favors, he kind of favors um, organizing society around favoring people with strong wills because they're the people who really push society forward. So Nietzsche is this person who really, really likes strong-willed people. Um, so these are, these are his comments. So he has, he's a, he has a conquering mindset. Uh, Nietzsche is great for, he, Nietzsche is great reading for people who have the conquering mindset. Yes, yeah, self-responsibility, self-determination. You have the ability to basically determine your own future. So I'll go, I'll go through here and I'll read some of his quotes on socialism, which are astounding. Hang on, let's do one more sip. All right. His first quote on socialism. Social, socialism is the tyranny of the lowest and the stupidest, the superficial, the envious, and the more than half actor. So his first quote, his first quote is that socialism is tyranny of the dumbest people who want to basically oppress the people at the top. That's socialism. It's a, it's a, it's a tyrann tyrannical system of people who are envious, people who are obsessed with wanting what other people have. Yes, exactly. Socialism is against individuality. So he, so he agrees with that. That's, that's the first good quote. Here's the second quote. In socialism, one follows a crowd, but no longer follows an argument. So this, we see this today. Like 
people don't even know what they believe. They don't even know, they can't even formulate or articulate their own arguments for what they think. They just follow a crowd. And that's what this socialism is. And you get the same thing with unions. So like, yes, it's a, exactly, it's a group identity. Socialism is like, it's not individualistic thinking. It's not for the strong willed person. It's for weaker, dumb people who can't think for themselves. Okay. So that, that's just fun. And you see this with unions. Like I have never, I have never associated with or liked being a part of unions because I have always felt that I myself am my best advocate. I myself can go to my boss and advocate for myself in the best manner. Nobody else can speak for me. So I have never liked, I have never liked socialist thinking or unionistic thinking because of that. Okay. Here's his, here's his third quote. This is, this is one of my favorites. Socialism is on the whole a bitter, hopeless affair. Socialists are the miserable, have miserable, bruised feelings to which their prose style bears witness. So this is so accurate. So he says, he says, socialists all have bruised feelings. I tweeted this yesterday because this quote is so amazing. Think of all the socialists, think of all the socialists you know. They all have bruised feelings. They're all these people who are emotional who are bitter about something in life and they want to get back at the people who they think like did, did something to them. They have this bitterness and this resentment. They're bitter because they have no purpose. Right. They don't. They just follow the group. So that's one. That's another one. Okay. Let's do another one. Let's see here. This is really funny. So this is 120 years ago. He says, in fact, I wish that socialism were discredited by a few great experiments showing that in a socialist society, life denies itself and cuts itself off at the roots. So what he's saying is, I wish, I wish there would be some socialistic government experiments so that people would see these people destroy themselves. This was written 120 years ago, and now we have that, okay? We've seen the Soviet Union completely collapse. We have seen we have seen China under Mao basically eat itself alive. We have seen Venezuela destroy itself. So like we have, now we now have we now have the fulfillment of what Nietzsche was hoping for. These experiments, which are unfortunate for human society, because these these experiments result in terrible catastrophes for the human population. But now we have these actual experiments that he was predicting and asking for to prove that socialism is a terrible idea. Okay, so he's got he's got these just it's I just I was reading this yesterday and I was just fascinated that you can read books that are hundreds of years old and if the quality of the writing is good, it still applies today. And it's so fascinating that the thinking, the mentality of the people who like socialism today is the same as the mentality as people who liked socialism 120 years ago. There's bitter, envious people who have bruised feelings. They think that all life is out to get them and they don't have any self-willed determination to fix it for themselves. So they try to organize and take from the people at the top. That is what, that is, that's, it's, it's just, it's fascinating. Okay, let's do a drink. So there's another thing I was reading. There's, a, I can, there's, another, there's another fascinating thing where nothing new under sun. So I've also been reading biography of, of Caesar. So Caesar, the conquering military Roman general. Okay. So I've been reading this biography on Caesar. And all the, all the context of the Roman civil war. So if you read the history of the Roman Republic, the Roman Empire... All of the civil wars, much of the conflict is generated around who should be a citizen of the Roman Republic and who is outside of citizenship. So as the Roman Empire expanded, right, they would perpetually conquer people. And then there would always be these fights about, well, once we've conquered these people, like, do we allow these people to be Roman citizens or not? Or do we give them Latin status, which is kind of like an intermediate, or are they completely like non-citizens? So it's just like, this is another example where like we see that today, like this is a perpetual argument for the last 3000 years is when you have an advanced civilization, there's always this perpetual argument of like who should be considered citizens. And this just relates to my other videos in the past, but talking about like the illegal immigrants coming in, like, like, what do we do with these people? I don't really know. I'm not, and I'm not talking about that today. Today is just a fun, a fun video to show you how if you read things that are thousands or hundreds of years old, you can see connections 
to today. Any questions? Now that we've discussed Nietzsche's thoughts on socialism. Socialism is a bad idea. Vote for me, March 3rd. End.